All right, you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. I'm going through the latest Fauci firmware update and it's kind of kicking my butt. With that said, welcome to Jason Bites Back, episode numero 64, or 64 for you Spanish impaired people. What's up, YouTube? Jason here with Jason Bites Back, episode number 64. Uh, as always, this video was brought to you by my awesome Patreon subscribers, subscribers, the five and $10 of which will be listed at the end of this video. I would not be recording this unless I absolutely had to, which I do because it's at the end of the month <clears throat> and the first is coming out. So what I can say is that it is seemingly not as bad as the first time I had this, um, but this is probably one of the more aggressive times that I've had it. I think I've had it like three times. The sweats and then the chills and then the body ache, like it's kind of everything kind of gets you. Either way, let's go ahead and jump right into the questions. Uh, the first question is going to be on the Plex got hacked video from Camille. He asked, uh, if you don't mind me asking, just because I had no idea, why did Plex fire you? COVID stuff, question mark. I wanted to bring this one up because I realized after the video where I said, hey, uh, by the way, Plex fired me. This is, I'm not their mouthpiece. Um, so I want to take this opportunity and clarify, I never worked for Plex. I just had a channel sponsorship through them and then they stopped sponsoring me, which, hey, that's completely fine. That's their choice. Um, I just said it sarcastically to basically imply at some point I worked for Plex. I did not work for Plex. No way I had any integration with their internal systems or anything like that. Like I had nothing really to do with Plex aside from having some sponsored videos and stuff like that. So I just wanted to clarify that. There's no alter meaning or ultimate meaning here or anything like that. Like they didn't reach out, say, how dare you say that we fired? Nothing like that. I just, I saw a couple comments mentioning this and I realized the way I said it, I pretty much implied, yeah, I used to work there and they fired me. But no, it was not like that. I said it the wrong way. So I just had sponsorship through them and now I don't. That's it. Next question is from Zachary Brown. It's on the uh, Hotspot LTE failover. He said, I want to like the Ubiquiti LTE device, but can't get over the fact that you have to pay monthly after the first time to use and the fact that it's $10 per gigabyte after the first gigabyte. Seems like an easy way to rack up a bill if your internet is down for more than a couple hours. Zachary, uh, you really drive home a good point. And that's kind of what I was trying to say is that, I mean, measure, like literally you're billing by the gigabyte. That is kind of wild if you think about it, especially in today's world. Um, if let's say hypothetically you're in the middle of doing an R sync or something, and you're backing things up, you know, to the internet to another server remotely, and let's say your internet goes down, well, you might have hundreds of gigabytes or a terabyte of uh, data that is queued up to being transferred. In which case, it would use you know the maximum throughput that you had available through the LTE. And it would just continue to do that. Um, when you're billing by the gigabyte, if you have that unlocked, you don't have any limitation, then, well, you're going to go bankrupt. And then if you have it locked and you do have a limitation, you're going to chew through it in a matter of seconds, depending on how fast it is. So um, <clears throat> other alternatives like Starlink or something like that, I think if you know, you're willing to pay the extra money is the better option. Um, but what I don't get is that AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, they offer like home internet plans that are 5G based that use SIM cards, that use cell phone towers, and they're like $50 a month and they're not billed by the gigabyte. So it's kind of weird that Unify would have that, you know, $10 per gigabyte plan. Yeah, you could buy the unlock version. You can go your own route with that, but I'm just saying it just seems unreasonable for any kind of realistic internet backup. Um, that very specific plan. That's all. That, that's all this is talking about is that AT&T plan. You know, that brings up another point um, that I actually don't really know. Um, but it, is there any, I, I doubt there is, but I could be wrong. Is there any like way to change your network profile based off of what ISP you're using? You know what I mean? Like, Let's say if you have our clone or something, some kind of backup software kicking in and it's backing up your network to a different network. Um, let's say the internet went down. Would there be some kind of a protocol that would say, hey, this ISP is down, you can still use the internet, you know, but we're gonna limit, like you're on a limited form of the internet. So like you still have communication, remote desktop, you have still have things like that, but um, bigger downloads, Windows updates, you know, whatever, just bigger downloads are not enabled because you are in this limited internet 
environment. So um, if you guys know of anything like that, leave that in comments down below. Just something that would be like, I don't know, something that would change it on a network level that every device could reach out to that that router and say, hey, what protocol am I on? Or what profile am I on? You know, can I use this? Or maybe even on a router level would block it. I don't really know. I'd be interested to know if there's anything within the realm of what I'm talking about. Next question is from uh, Marcus, uh, Marcus Elinser. He says, thoughts on the new multiple edition feature? He's talking about Plex. Uh, it is something that I've looked at. I haven't actually used or updated my Plex yet, but I have seen a couple of videos. I just, I like the idea. I really do. It's something that I've done manually for years. So I'm not like in a rush to like run out and update it and then just start using it automatically. Um, I think if any of you guys have collected media and you know that you have director's cut, you have, you know, whatever, just different versions of a movie, and you wanted all of them on your server, you've probably already done this where you can go in, you can split up, you know, what, what was matched and you can manually assign names, you can manually assign poster arts and you can have your own version of the multiple additions feature and you can just do it manually. And as long as you don't have a hundred different videos or movies or whatever that, you know, have that, it's something you can do reasonably on your own time. I like the fact that they include it now. It's a great feature, it looks like. Um, but on the flip side, I've kind of been doing it for a long time, just the manual way. So all this is doing is just making things a little bit easier, I think, just collectively. So if I ever had to rebuild my Plex library, I think this new feature would be more beneficial just because um, that automatic generation and, and meta collection or whatever, building of the database. So I like it. It's just not a personal high priority to update to it. That's all. I, I usually try to avoid updates. I don't know why. Next question is from uh, Jamie Stuff. Jamie said, I'm an over the road trucker. My main internet connection is local Wi Fi. Grab through a uh, ubiquity nano station. If I'm parked at a place without Wi Fi, I have a USB LTE modem on ATT with an unlimited tablet SIM in it on my family plan. I've pulled over 50 gigabyte in one month, no issues. I'm using a Raspberry Pi as a USB to Ethernet adapter. That was, a, that was a long question. Actually, I, I only brought this up because I know that Starlink came out with a, an RV solution to Starlink, uh, basically an antenna that was more adept at handling the winds, like the constant movements, the wind, and you know the abuse from being driven on the road. So I guess I didn't really think about it before, but as far as like an RV, yeah, there's a bunch of people that have RV, but when it comes to truckers, like there are just millions of truckers. So that's like an even... Like that's by multitudes, maybe 10 or 20 or 100 times more of a saturated market, truckers versus RV people. So I guess my question, what does Tesla have as a solution for truckers? Because that would be a pretty big market. Tesla recently announced a partnership with T-Mobile, I believe. Is it T-Mobile? Yeah, T-Mobile, um, where they would basically incorporate the Starlink internet connection into some phone plans and then people would be able to use that to either send text or make phone calls. And this was basically just a handheld device connecting to the Starlink network. So obviously that's completely different. It's a phone, but the technology is there to connect something like a phone to a Starlink network. So why can I not have a very simple out of the way antenna on top of a truck that would you know, serve a purpose of providing internet to a much needed community of people who need internet on the go, especially all over the United States, all over the world, really. But um, I don't know. I guess I don't know if they have any solutions for it or if you've considered Starlink as an option. And if you have, but didn't go with it, why not? Next question is from Matt Bowles. Uh, there is zero issue with running Cat5B at the length at, uh, that they give in the box. I can't understand why people want to constantly bang away at that. 10G will pass with no issues up to 45. Yeah, okay. Matt, sometimes I forget how sarcastic comments can be taken so literal by people. I made this comment about the included uh, Cat 5E cable that came in a box, and I was like, who would use that? Just because it came with the box, you know? It was, it was a very sarcastic comment. Obviously, the cable is just fine for your needs. This kind of goes back to the whole Plex thing. Like, I really I need to try to remember that 
no matter what you say or, or how sarcastic you think you phrased it, like inside, I can start to say sarcastic things 100% serious because I've said it so many times. It just becomes natural. And even if I do still say it sar sarcastic, there's going to be people out there that take it serious. So I guess that's just the way it is, though. Next question is from uh, Big Bulk. Said I like to use a Mata, but they really need to add more switches like Unify 5 port PoE powered. Um, powered one plus no camera options like protect yeah big bollock uh omada is definitely a new system relatively compared to what unify has uh i mean they have had time to add they've had a bunch of r d like they just keep adding more and more things and they have a phenomenal range of different products that you can purchase and to use to help build out your network on you know small scales to larger scales so uh TP-Link Armada is definitely in the infancy of its production and the lineup of everything that it has to offer is limited. And really it's going to be limited based off of how successful it is because ultimately Unify got more things because of its success. So uh, TP-Link Armada coming into the space and being like, hey, we offer a lot of these same products. If they can't find the same success to keep bankrolling future projects, then obviously they're not gonna expand. Um, but Unify has already done that. So. But I agree, Unify definitely has a lot of things. Everything from the PoE powered switches to little, little small cameras. It's kind of cool. Next question is from Trot Monkey says, an, an overall overview of Amata versus Unify setup. Would you consider switching from Unify? I kind of doubt it. Well, Trot Monkey, I think that with what I've messed with so far, like I like the TP-Link Amata system. I think it has a lot to it. But no, I don't. I don't see myself switching over. I went into these, uh, to this review with the open mind, open mindness of the possibility. You know, say, hey, you know what? I don't think so. But let's not let's not like count it out, like without even trying it out. Now that I've had a chance to kind of sit down and play with it, it it, it definitely feels less polished than Unify, which again, kind of goes back to Unify being in the space for a long time, having a lot of time to, you know, research and develop and improve and add and that sort of thing. Um, Omada definitely has that fresh feeling of, hey, you know, this needs, this needs overhauled already. This needs fine tuned. Some features need added, you know, simpler things need to be done in order to make this usable and more, maybe some more advanced things need to be done to make it more advanced. <laughs> But I think what gets me the most is um, in order to mount to mount it into the rack, like I have to either purchase or 3D print a mounting mechanism to stick it into the rack. So I, I think that's my biggest thing is that like you have these little squares and hey, it's cool, it's all separate or whatever, but you have these little squares and it's not really meant to go into a rack. Um, if you are building out your, your super nice home lab network, you probably have a rack, a network rack at least minimum right if you have a small business you probably have a network rack i would imagine it just seems like an obvious point but not so much with the omada stuff bear in mind i say this with complete acknowledgement of the lack of experience i have in the professional space to you know for professional small business or medium business whatever networking that i only i only say this from my viewpoint you know my home lab you know nerdy little tech viewpoint of what uh, an advanced network should look like and that is rack mounted things so maybe it's normal to not have stuff rack mounted i don't know but to me switching over actually using that on a day-to-day -day basis versus what i have now with unify it's really hard to to justify that next question is from alex smith i'm curious is there anything like ubiquity or omada that can handle two terabytes of speed uh google recently announced support for this but it requires using their router system don't know why I actually picked this. Oh yeah, so two terabytes, are you sure? Two terabytes of speed, that's pretty insane. Maybe you mean two gigabits worth of speed? In which case, there's a lot of fiber companies that have not only like two gigabit, but there's also some that offer five and six gigabit. Uh, there's someone on Discord, long time, you know, suffering person of this channel, JDERP, who recently got a new house, new fiber line, and got five gig connection to his house. It's symmetrical. 
and I hate him for it because he pays $180, $180 a month, and that's basically what I pay with one gig down and 35 up. So that's fiber, and that annoys the crap out of me. As far as uh, Google requiring you to use their router system, I don't, I mean, I would imagine that that's mainly just to make sure it works. Um, I don't really know much past that, but uh, it really just kind of depends on where you are, what fiber company you have. There's Comcast, there's Infinity, there's whatever. Uh, a bunch of different places have fiber, so it just really kind of depends. Uh, I would say that using their router system is mainly just for the key functionality of the service, making sure it works. I don't know if there's options to hook up to that or bypass it, kind of like what Starlink did, but um, it just sounds like a way to, to make sure that your service is, is what it's supposed to be. Next question is from Jamie Stuff. One major plus for Unraid that you miss for home lab slash Plex users is the ability to add a hard drive seamlessly to the array. You can't expand a VDEV virtual drive under TrueNAS by adding drives. Absolutely. That is the major selling point. One is because when I was building out Unraid, I didn't have matching drives. I was throwing old drives out, replacing it with new drives. I had all different drive sizes. I had, I was constantly adding to it, right? You need more space, you throw another drive into it. You redo your thing and then boom, you have that much more space. So um, that is adding drives seamlessly and mixing drives seamlessly are the two major factors for Unraid. Yeah, you don't get the speed that you get with TrueNAS, there's some, there are some speed downsides compared to TrueNAS, but um, you get that raw storage, which is why it's useful for Plex or things like that, that really just, you're just storing large quantities of data. You don't necessarily need to be fast, you're just storing it. And if you need the most effective use of your hard drive space, um, I think that Unraid is probably one of the better solutions out there. And that is actually the last question of today's video. Um, but before I close that question, I do want to say that I have considered uh, what it would be, what it would look like to build a new server that was true NAS based for space, like just for raw storage. And I think based off of my needs, really sitting down, even where I am now, like really sitting down, like I still think Unraid is the better solution for me. Hypothetically, even if I, you know, had a way to store all my my stuff and switch over to TrueNAS and use all the drives that I have and then move it, you know, like not have any data issues, right? I don't think I would switch to TrueNAS as it sits. Um, yeah, there are a few times where I'm moving a large amount of data to the to the server where I do wish it would, like I think to myself yeah it would be nicer if this was a little faster but the amount of hard drive space that I gained from Unraid compared to something like TrueNAS like with TrueNAS with 30 drives or whatever you'd be looking at probably at least what four drives that would be burned just to parity drives if not more um maybe six right per 10 I mean, there could, there could be six. So I guess I want to pose the question for any of you out there who have used Unraid and went to TrueNAS or vice versa, used TrueNAS and went to Unraid. Like what was the main defining reason for you to make the switch? You know, was it speed? Was it hard drive storage? Was it, you know, software like Docker and like, I don't know, like what, what made you switch? Either way, what really sold it for you? Leave it in the comments section down below. Well, guys, that is it. As I said, the $5 and $10 Patreon subscribers will be listed at the end of this video, so make sure to check that out. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure to post that in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day. I think the worst part about this one is the, the pain. Like in all parts of my body, all parts, like from, from right here out. Like it just, it just goes and it travels, hits my neck real bad. It's murdering my back right now. Like it's hard to just sit, right? It's just everything hurts. Like that's, that's just kind of getting me. And then the chills and then the, the sweats, like going through the fever phases, I guess. You're like burning up and then you're cold. Like, like I said, it's not as bad as it was the first time I got it. And when I went to Vegas in 2020, but it's pretty dumb. Like it's. I woke up this morning, I felt really bad. Like really, I didn't want to get out of bed. I, I, I ended up calling.
I ended up calling into work. I was like, yeah, it's hitting me, you know, I, not going to happen. Uh, and I stayed in bed until like noon. It was miserable because I had to get up and take the dog out. And she was just like, what's going on? Why are you not getting ready for work? Why is your shirt not on? Why are you don't have socks? And she's just looking at me like, what's going on? I'm like, damn it, go pee. I need to go back to bed. I know this is throwing you off, but just go pee. Oh, well, at the end of the day, uh, this means once I get over this, then I should be good for at least another six months to a year. So that'd be cool. At least that's how my immune system has been so far. So, yeah, peace.